All right, this is lesson 5.2, and we're going to do some more graphing today, but this time we're going to graph out derivatives and something called an antiderivative from graphs. Okay, now I think let's just focus on the derivative part first. So if I give you a f graph or the original function, I want us to be able to figure out what the derivative graph looks like or the slope graph. Okay. Now, we can also do the same where if I give you the derivative graph, I can ask you to find the second derivative graph. Now, this one I don't think is too difficult, but we're going to use the idea that a derivative is really just the slope. So the goal here is really to find slopes at each of these points, and then we'll just plot them. All right? So example number one here, look at this function f. Okay, here's my original function. And I'm asking you to try to sketch the graph of f prime, or the derivative. And so ultimately, our goal is to figure out the slopes at each of these points. So if I draw tangent lines, I'm thinking, hmm, here's a tangent line here that I can use. Maybe I'll use this one here. Uh, perhaps I want to try this one over here. And then this one down here, and then back up here. Okay. Now at each of these places, can you tell me or estimate what the slope is? Well, at these horizontal lines, yeah, we know that's the slope or m equals to zero. Good. Uh, what about these really steep lines here? This looks like, oh, look at this. If I draw this line, can you see how this is a run of one unit and then a up or rise of two units? So the slope probably equals to two. Ah, and then similarly, I think over here is the same thing at the end point. Once again, the uh, slope of equal to two. And then perhaps this one at zero, if I draw this line, it looks like, oh, this is a, hmm, a down of two as I go right two. So the slope here would be equal to, yeah, negative one. Good. And so ultimately now what I want to do is at those same x values in the graph to the right, I want you to plot the slopes. So we'll go from left to right. So the first point here is like at negative 3.5, the slope is two. Um, at negative 2 for the x value, the slope is 0, so I'm going to plot 0. Uh, at 0 for the x value, the slope is negative 1. Mm. And then at uh, 2, the slope value is 0. Good. And then over here, we got um, uh, at the value of about 3.5 for x, the slope is 2. And if I were to connect them all together now, nice with a curve, you get something like that. And since it stops here and starts there, I'm just going to put some solid dots. There you have it, friends. That's how we can sketch the graph of the derivative. Okay, By finding the slopes at each of those points. And then plotting those points on the derivative graph. Okay? Nice. Now, that's going from graph to derivative. What I call graphing derivatives. Now, let me give you examples of how to graph antiderivatives. You're like, what's an antiderivative? Anti everything just means mm -hmm, going the reverse way. So in this case, I'm saying if you're given the derivative graph, can you go and graph out the original f graph? Okay. And to do this, we're going to use the ideas that we learned last day. Um, we're going to use the f prime number line. Okay, because that allows us to uh, find the position of the points on the f prime graph. Okay, um, we're going to use the location or position of the points to do so. And I'll talk to you about that in a sec. Not only that, then I want you to then make a second derivative number line graph. And remember, if you're given the first derivative graph, in order to get the second derivative, you need to find the slopes. So that's like what we just did up here. So that's doing what we did up there. Okay, so do that. And then thirdly, once we have our first derivative number line and our second derivative number line, then we can combine it together to actually graph out the function f. And this is pretty much what we did last lesson in section 5.1, or not, yeah, lesson 5.1. Okay, and then if you're given a starting point, great, we have to use it. But if not, then actually we are free to shift the graph vertically as we please. So we can actually have any type of uh, starting orientation. All right. So let me show you what I mean by doing example number two. 
So number two says, ah, I'm going to use this graph F prime. Okay, I changed it now. Okay, I know the graph looks the same, but this is now F prime. And I want us to then sketch a graph of the original function f with a particular starting point of 0, 1. Okay? So, how do we go about doing this? Well, like I said, in order to go from f prime to f, we need to do these number lines, okay? Like last day. So if I look at f prime here, if I do the number line, I always try to find out where the critical numbers are. And that's where it equals to 0. So where does the graph equal to 0? Uh-huh, right at negative 3.5 also at 0 and also at 3.5 good so these are where my derivative equals to 0 now what else did I do afterwards with the number line yes yes I have to actually figure out if it was positive or negative in each of the regions now how do I see that with a graph well I think with a graph it's actually nice and easy I don't have to plug it anywhere I see that the graph is above the x-axis here so if it's above the x-axis we know that this must be positive right and then for the region that's down here between 0 and 3.5 oh yeah it's below the x-axis for the f prime so that means the slope here must always be negative so a minus sign okay now how do we figure out the second derivative graph again well the second derivative remember is the slopes okay of the first derivative graph. So really what I'm saying now is can you actually sketch out the slopes? Didn't we do that? Mm-hmm. Slope, 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 slopes. Hopefully you can see that at negative 2 the slope is 0, right? The slope is 0. Also at positive 2 the slope is 0. And then what do we know about the actual values between let's say negative 2 and 2? Well in this case look the graph looks this way. I will erase so I can see it again. Uh, what do we notice about this then? The slope seem to be, that's right, decreasing. So if it's a decreasing slope, it's negative. Uh, looking at this region here, bigger than 2, what do you think the slopes, what, what, what's happening with the slopes here? It looks like it's increasing. Mm -hmm. And then finally, how about over here? Uh, yes, the slopes are also increasing, so a positive sign there as well. Great. So now we're back to what we did last day. How do I combine the F prime and F double prime graphs together to mm -hmm, graph out the function? So, um, let me say to you the following. Sometimes it's actually nice to be able to split this up into the different regions. So, do you see this region here? I'm going to do another line here called F, okay? Can you see I have a negative 3.5 and negative 2? So that's a region from negative 2 to 0, 0 to 2, and then 2 to 3.5, okay? Now, Together visually, can you see? And I'm going to try to erase my highlighting so I can highlight a bit better. Okay, you don't do that in your notes, but now can you see in this region between negative 2 and 3.5? What do we notice? We notice that the first derivative is positive and the concavity is also positive. What do we know the shape of the graph then should be like if it's first derivative is positive? Yeah, so it's going upwards like this, but wait, wait, concavity is also positive. <gasps> yes, if you can visualize something like this, right? Happy face curve, perfect. Now, what about the next, oops, that's not good. Uh, what about the next region? How about this part between negative 2 and 0? Notice that the derivative, the first derivative is still positive, so it's up. Or increasing but now the second derivative is negative so that's concaving which way concaving down that's right so I guess it looks like this the graph okay and similarly let's keep going now how about the next region from 0 to 2 that's this piece so notice the first derivative is negative now and the second derivative is also negative so sad face but also going downwards, so I can I can see that it should look like this. And then finally, the last region from 2 to 3.5, negative, but also a positive 
concavity so sad face but positive concavity this I think helps us now get the shape of the graph so if I'm starting at the point 0 comma 1 right here here we go okay now I'm going to go let's say to the right first so let me take a look at the values from 0 to 2 oh I see in my little chart here now that from 0 to 2 it looks like it's downward and sad right so okay and by the way I don't really know if it's gonna be like this or like this it doesn't really matter as long as you get the general shape okay so I'm just gonna go ooh, sad and then from 2 to 3.5 notice I've changed my concavity so still going downwards but maybe like this and then I can now do the negative values for X so yeah there's my increasing with concave up and now increasing with concaving down so any graph like this will be fine so as a note I'll say other than the point 0 comma 1 the other points the other points cannot be precisely found yet okay there's not enough information to do that but as long as you get the general shape we're going to be happy okay all right now one more example here for this lesson and then we're done i would strongly suggest you do lots of practice for this lesson kind of weird but nonetheless important okay so in this case now i've given you the f prime graph and as your chance now to actually show the second derivative graph so the derivative so this is the derivative right and how do we do that ah we estimate the slopes good 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 and then also go the other way of finding the antiderivative to get the original graph and that's to use the first derivative and the second derivative information okay so if you want to try this on your own great I would highly recommend you do that and then come back and check. If you're still kind of not sure because you're like, I'm not really good at the concept, then yeah, follow along with me and then get this done. All right? So if I were to look at doing the first part, taking the first derivative graph and making the second derivative, I'm looking at slopes. Hmm. Hey, this is a straight line. So guess what? The slope's always the same. What do we know about the slope in all these cases? Yeah, it's equal to 1. So I'm going to draw 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, connect it all together. And then notice here we have a sharp turn. So therefore, there is actually no slope at 1. I'm going to put a nice open dot. Okay. And then the next part here, you're thinking, hmm, what's going on here? I guess I could start doing um, graphing like this. Uh, slopes and just try to plot them and if you did I think you would get something like the slope here is zero and then maybe this is like one and then here's two and so forth so you might get a line like that okay it's a line um, okay I didn't draw a nice line it could be maybe not linear and a little bit curved I don't know but I'm just gonna say it's linear by the way if this was a parabola I'm gonna say note if this was a parabola, okay, then this over here is definitely a line. Why, you might be asking? Well, remember what is the equation of a parabola? Yeah, y equals x squared, in this case maybe plus 2. And remember if I'm finding the slopes, then what is the derivative? Right? The derivative of x squared plus 2 is 2x. That definitely is a line. Okay? So you can even use analytical things to help you with the graph here. Okay, great. Uh, now we'll do the harder part, going backwards, the antiderivative. So once again, I want to make a first derivative number line. We want to find our critical numbers first of all. And the only critical number I have here where it equals to zero is I think negative two. Notice to the left of negative two, the graph is below the y-axis or the x-axis. So the first derivative is negative. Everything to the right of negative 2, the first derivative is positive. 
using our second derivative, that's the graph to the far right, notice we have an issue at zero, right? Not really a, well, yeah, it could be an inflection point, but there's some issue because it changes. Noticing here that, A, hey, mm, the slope, or the second derivative, the second derivative, I should say, the second derivative graph is always positive because it's above the x-axis. And also, to the right of that, it's also positive. So this is always concaving up. Okay. Now, ultimately, what can we do here? Well, um, we don't have a starting point. So guess what? You can start anywhere you want. Uh, if I want to say that I have a key point at negative 2, um, and everything to the left is ne negative, so I'm saying, hey, negative and then positive, right? I can do that, um, but does it matter if it's here, or does it matter if it's here, or does it matter if it's here? This is where I said earlier, it doesn't matter vertically. Remember how I said that thing about you are free to shift the graph vertically? This is what I mean, because we don't really have a point to start off with. So, if I just arbitrarily chose this point, negative 2, comma, negative 1, as my minimum, that's perfectly fine. This is negative, oh, and then this is positive. Now you may be thinking, well, what's going on here at 0? You're right, there is some kind of weird thing at 0, where um, the second derivative is 0, but then it continues on. That just means it's still going to be increasing. It's still going to be concaving upwards. But maybe it's a little bit steeper at this point. I don't know. But anyways, there might be something here, but there might not. But nonetheless, a graph like this looks good to me. Okay? Just be aware that there's... Um, yeah, the graph can be shifted vertically because, once again, we have no starting value. So since we have no starting value or point this could be shifted vertically okay all right it's time for you to practice with this okay um, I would actually do all the questions from assignment 5.2. All right? Okay. Get to work.